Hello guys, I have good news at the end of the article so stay tuned until then. Today in this video we'll be talking about cognitive debiasing again. Let's take this scenario and then we'll be discussing it. A 10 year old boy comes to the emergency department complaining of lower abdominal pain for one day duration. The patient does have nausea and he vomited once. He does not have diarrhea however. Now the physician starts doing the physical examination. He raises up the patient's shirt and starts doing palpation from the upper areas as not to cause anxiety for the patient. Now when he reaches the right lower quadrant, the patient shouts ouch and the physician finds tenderness at McBurney's point and the physician suspects acute appendicitis. He calls surgery for a consult and they come after an hour or so. After that time when the surgeons come, they evaluate him again and they do a physical examination and again tenderness over the right lower quadrant is found. However, the surgeon decides to do a genital examination and he pulls down the patient's pants and he does a genital examination and he finds the right testicle to be swollen and painful. The patient is quickly transferred to surgery with the diagnosis of testicular torsion. Unfortunately, it was too late and the testis was not salvageable and they had to do an orchiectomy. Now let's ask what happened here. When the first physician evaluated that patient, he took the history from him and he did an abdominal examination and he found when he went down to the right lower quadrant that there was tenderness at McBurney's point. The physician stopped and called the surgery team with his suspicion of course of acute appendicitis. Now the surgery team took about an hour or so to come and they evaluated him again and the surgeon now he found when he did a genital examination which the first physician did not do he found that the right testicle was changed there was swelling and pain in the right testicle so what happened really was that his testicular torsion was radiating upwards and it was not acute appendicitis but the pain in the right lower quadrant and at McBurney's point it was really from the radiation from testicular torsion. Now because of the delay from the first physician to the surgeon, which was about one hour, this increased the risk for the patient and may have resulted in failure of salvaging the testicle at the operation, which in the end resulted in orchiectomy. Now in psychology, the error of the first physician is called premature closure or search satisficing. In this error, the physician may stop further evaluation, whether it's history, physical, or diagnostic tests, because he already found something that makes sense and fits the diagnosis. In this case, the physician, when he evaluated the patient and he found right lower quadrant tenderness, he thought it was appendicitis and he stopped. If the first physician, however, did a complete examination from the beginning, including the genital examination, the diagnosis would not have been delayed by this hour or so and the chances of the patient would have been increased. So now let's talk about the three types of cognitive debiasing strategies that could have prevented this type of diagnostic error. Number one, if the physician had used a consistent evidence-based approach in his history and examination, like taking a full history of the signs and symptoms and doing a complete physical examination, including the genital examination. So that's the first thing, to always do a complete uh, history and physical. Now the second cognitive devising strategy is to always ROSE. ROSE stands for rule out worst case scenario. For example in the case of lower abdominal pain the worst cases are appendicitis if it ruptures and for example a strangulated hernia because the bowel can be lost and testicular torsion because in that case the testicle will have to be removed if it's not saved in time. So these are for, are, for example, the top three dangerous things that the clinician has to consider in that patient. In the emergency department, for example, in the medical ward, chest pain is always said to be MI, myocardial infarction, until proven otherwise. So in that case, rose for a patient complaining of chest pain is to always rule out, for example, a myocardial infarction. Now the third cognitive debiasing strategy is to always ask, what else could this be? So... Even if I diagnose him initially with appendicitis, I should ask, what are the other possibilities? So it can be testicular torsion, it can be epididymoarchitis, it can be a urinary tract infection, etc. So I should think of these things and evaluate for them in my history and physical and possibly the diagnostic workup. And we should always remember the common saying 
that when the diagnosis is made, the thinking stops. So after reaching a diagnosis or a solution to our problem, we may take off our thinking hats and stop trying to solve the problem because we think we already solved it. So a quick recap to what we have said today is that premature closure or self satisficing is a bias in which a physician may stop evaluation because he thinks he already found the cause. And the cognitively biasing strategies that we can follow to decrease the chance of this happening are three. So first, to always use a consistent approach and do a full evaluation in the history and physical, even if you think that we found the cause for the symptoms. The second is to always rule out the worst case scenarios, even if we think we have an initial diagnosis. And the third strategy is to always remember and ask the question, what else could this be? What are the differentials? And did I go through them all? So I hope that you like the way I explained premature closure bias. Now regarding the good news that I spoke about is that Hussam Wahaya, my colleague and I, have finally published our first article and surprisingly it is in psychology. And I'll leave it right here. The title is Social Psychological Skill in a Cross-Cultural Setting. So I'll leave a link in the description below for you to check out if you are interested. The references are in the description below as well. Please stay tuned for my future videos on similar topics as this one today. Thanks for watching. A 10 year old boy, previously healthy, comes to the emergency department with a complaint of lower abdominal pain for 10 days duration.